be a bigger one. You pulled drag, buddy. Gonna let this guy go. See you, bud. Well, in today's little fishing episode, we are gonna be targeting some mid-June crappie uh, up north. These crappie are late post-spawn, early summer pattern. And uh, typically on our natural lakes up north, these crappie are gonna stack up on the deeper edges of the weeds. Um, on this lake right now, the weeds, the thick weed mats stop at about 10 to 12 feet, uh, but there are some sparse weeds growing in about 15 to 16 feet of water too. Um, I'm gonna be fishing a mid-lake hump and I'm using one of my favorite search baits this time of year. Uh, you need to have it in your boat, at least, if not tied onto one of these rods, one of these ACCs, and that is a beetle spin. Today we are going with a uh, 1 16th ounce beetle spin, Colorado blade, with a 1 16th ounce hand tie jig. Shout out to MCM Tackle. Uh, they sent me some, they're out of Texas. They sent me some of these hand tie jigs, so I'm gonna try them out. I got an assortment here of different Colorado blades, different sizes, pairing them up with the jig size. So on the far right here, we got the quarter ounce chartreuse blade with a quarter ounce jig. And then I got a curly tail, great search bait, plastic to use this time of year. This is a crappie monster curly tail pattern and uh, curly tails, gotta love throwing those. Next one is a Pete's Tackle slab grabber on the 1 8 ounce beetle spin. This is just a uh, silver or a nickel Colorado blade, white ACC jig, and then the uh, purple and pink slab grabber by Pete's Tackle. And then I got a couple hair jig patterns here. 1 16 ounce, 1 16 ounce nickel blade, Colorado blade with the uh, little carrot hair jig. And a 1 32nd. 132nd ounce. Yeah, they go down all the way down to 132nd. It's windy. It's hard for that camera to focus, but that's a 132nd ounce with a, another hand tied hair jig. Key to uh, beetle spins, just cast and reel it in. Uh, mix up the cadence a little bit. Sometimes work it a little bit like a jerk bait. Give it a little bit of pause. That does help trigger a strike. Uh, but this time of year, these fish are going to be schooled up. Well, I shouldn't say they're schooled up. Today they're gonna to be schooled up because we got a pretty strong wind out of the north. Um, typically, if it was flat calm, uh, these fish are gonna be spread across the entire weed bed. Um, on a day like today, they're either gonna be stacked up on the uh, downwind side uh, of the lake, or because we're fishing a mid-lake hump, we're gonna be on the downwind side of the weed bed on this mid-lake hump. I'll show you some screenshots on side imaging, kind of what this looks like. It's not that big of an area. I feel like we're super dark, there we go. It's not that big of an area. Um, it's maybe about 50 yards wide by 60, 70 yards long. And uh, yeah, this it's very sparse weeds around it. And then it's super thick on the shallow top of this of this submerged island. Um, so just, I'm just gonna be casting around the edges. These crappie actually, there's a school of crappie that actually spawned on top of it, which is not typical, I don't think. Um, usually they, they go to the shorelines to do that. But uh, these crappie went from schooling to their post-spawn phase, and now they're late post-spawn into their summer pattern. I don't think these crappie are going to stay here throughout the summer. I think it's just one of those things during the month of June, um, after they spawned, we're kind of in that in-between phase. And so once summer pattern kind of rolls through, these water temps get into the mid-70s, upper 70s, they're going to push out and uh, find some deeper cover in 15 to 20 feet of water as summer rolls on. But let's go anchor up. I got pushed off the I got pushed off the the place where I'm fishing because of this wind. But let's go anchor back up uh, with the anchor lock on the Garmin here, and we'll go catch some crappie. All right, finally got anchored up. We're anchor locked on this edge of this weed line. I don't know if you guys can see that, but the weed line's just a big pile of weeds right here, and then it stops right here. So I'm just gonna cast, I can kinda, I can see it. The water's clear enough, I can see that weed edge right through here, and I'm just gonna cast alongside of it. And uh, I saw them on the side imaging. They're kinda tough to see, because my boat was bouncing so much that, but there the, there's one. They're right on the edge. First cast, all right, not big at all, but not big at all. 
But there's crappie number one. This is just a great tactic. If you're not sure kind of where these fish are set up, you can cover a ton of water with this. It's just a classic go-to. Oh, was there another, that was another tap. I saw what I thought was a school on side imaging, but these waves are, when these waves start rolling, your transducer bouncing up and down, it can be a little tough to see schools of crappie. I think I got a couple screenshots for you, side imaging, what they look like. Somebody asked in the comment section, how would you go about anchoring up on a spot like this? Is that another fish? If you didn't have a, if you didn't have a trolling motor at all, I think was the question. On a day like today, I'd probably anchor, throw the anchor in the middle of the weed bed because I don't think these fish are in the middle. And uh, kind of let it drift back till that anchor rope's at about a 45 degree angle before I tie it off on a boat cleat. But uh, as far as trying to be quiet, I don't know. If you don't have a trolling motor, it's, it's tough. So one question I did have, and I do read the comment section. So if you do have a comment, post in the comment section. One question I did see is, uh, when I find them on live scope, can I go over them with the down imaging? Because I know a lot of you have uh, sonar units that may only have 2D sonar and down imaging. Uh, you may not have side imaging. So this is what they look like on down imaging. Typically, oh, there's one following it up. Come on, buddy. No, didn't want it. Uh, typically down imaging, you know, we're in about 13, 14 feet. So you could definitely idle over the school and see them on down imaging. The problem is usually when you're less than, usually when you're less than 10 feet of water, uh, you don't want to go over the top of them. You're just going to scatter them um, unless you're on a brush pile or, you know, some sort of fixed piece of structure. Even though this is a big weed bed, well, smaller weed bed than what's on the rest of the lake, but even though this is a weed bed, you can still scatter them in about 12 to 13 feet, especially because this water is pretty clear. Probably right in the sun on that shot, but there would be a nice one for the frying pan. Well, these fish are actually pushed. <laughs> when I first found them before I started filming that intro, they uh, the wind wasn't this bad. And these fish actually pushed way off this weed edge. Well, not way off, but they're, they're about 20 feet off the weed edge towards the downwind side. I think they just got the, with these waves coming through, there's just so much current from these waves pushing them right out of these weeds. Um, there's nothing they can really hide against because this is just a wide open spot all the way around it. it. Drops down into 25, 30 feet and it just comes up to this eight foot point or eight foot submerged island. So it looks like these fish got pushed right off the edge. The good news is these waves actually pack them up pretty tight. Um, they're schooled up. I mean, there's there's hundreds down there. They're schooled up real tight. Oh, there he was. Dang it. Right there at the boat. Right there at the boat. That's a little guy. But he choked it. He choked it. There's one. Be a decent one. It's hard to tell he's bumping into the weeds. Nope. Nope. Well, you are going to catch a ton of fish. It's just you might have to weed through those those smaller fish with these these setups. There he is. Yeah, I don't know if we're going to get a 12 inch fish out of the school or not. There's not many in this lake that are about that size, but they're definitely hungry. Definitely hungry today. Now, the bite on any type of search bait for crappie, it's not a thump, most likely. Uh, the bigger crappie are going to push your line, so it's going to feel like your rod tip's just unloading. But typically, you'll just be slow reeling, and all of a sudden, they'll just be dead weight. You might feel, feel 
few taps once they grab it and try to start turning, but it's, it's not gonna be like a thump. It's not like vertical jigging, um, where those crappie will come up and thump it. Ooh, that might be a better one. When you hear drag, usually it's a better fish, unless he was just in the weeds. I'm guessing that's what he was. He was just in the weeds. I don't know if you saw that, that the rod tip just loaded up. He's not a big fish. He's another nine incher. Um, rod tip just loaded up, and once once you set the hook, or once you drive that hook into their mouth, because you're continuing to reel, then you might feel some twitches in the rod because they're trying to turn with that bait. But typically, it's just a load up of the rod tip. Let's see if we can get another one here. Seems like that. I've been trying to cast in the same spot because right, yep, right there. Just that rod tip loads up. There's a ton of them down there, but they are not big. And they're hitting a pretty decent sized bait too. This is a, I believe this is a two and three quarter inch curly tail, with three sixteenth ounce jig. These guys are definitely hungry today. See you bud. There he is. Now that I found the school, that was back to back cast right there. And I found the cadence too. Slowed down the cadence a little bit, now I'm getting a lot more bites. For a while there, I lost the school. Or I didn't have the right cadence. See you, bud. Quick release. Oh! Be a bigger one. You pulled drag, buddy. a little bit better one they're still all about nine inches but I think you guys get the point spinner bait or spinner bait beetle spin which is a micro spinner bait great great search bait presentation for these early summer pattern crappie on these weed beds up north gonna let this guy go Let's see bud so there you go beetle spin you better have it tied on for summertime crappie fishing up north. Even even some of you guys down south, this could be a very effective way to catch those fish. They're sitting in those shallower brush piles uh, this time of year. Awesome, awesome go-to bait. Just cast it over these weed edges. Uh, during the early morning, late evenings, they're gonna be stacked up closer into the weeds. Today we're, we're fishing them kind of late afternoon, early evening, so they're pushed out, plus the wind's gonna push them off these weed edges but great tactic i'm throwing the uh i'm using the six and a half foot acc crappie sticks casting rod it's got the smaller eyelets here for uh, precision casting and then i'm going with the 1000 size pc fun viper x spinning reel six pound mono straight mono um, you don't this is not a complicated setup and it covers a lot of water this time of year to find those fish typically they're not going to be stacked up this tight the wind definitely helped today push these schools tighter together. If it was a little bit calmer, I would actually be trolling around this mid-lake hump and casting in every every different direction trying to find these fish uh, because they're, nef they're definitely not gonna be schooled up as tight as they were today, but because we had the wind, helps out a bit. So, um, got any comments or questions? Post them in the comment section below. Otherwise, you can message me on either Facebook or Instagram. Appreciate you watching as always. We'll see ya.